one of the things that's most attractive, that's the most attractive thing to women ever is your truthfulness. Yeah. Even when they don't like the truthfulness. I mean, you know, we talk about every once in a while, Kevin Samuels, rest his soul. Um, Our Lord and Savior, Kevin Samuels. <laughs> no name above that name. <laughs> he, he, you, they, you know, here's a dude who, who they knew how he was going to respond. If you're 40 right. years old and you 190 pounds, mm. you know what his response is going to be. But yeah. they would call up anyway. Anyway, yeah. I know. Yo, what's up, Square Pimp Brigade? On this episode, we have comedian and my boy Dean Edwards. We're here to discuss arguing about the small things. What's the man's biggest fear? The genius of Kevin Samuels. And also, uh, I go over the first step of the five bricks. So kind of explain why it works and what it does do. So um, let's get it. Yeah, that's right, guys. Thank you for uh, uh, supporting the show. And if you love the show and uh, want to help support it, uh, join us over at Patreon. Patreon.com slash Manschool202. That's where you can get uh, some of the bonus coverage we do. Like uh, this week, we continue our conversation with Dean Edwards, and we answer listener mail as we talk about why you should never lie and uh, how to better, how to be better at communicating your value. So uh, you join us over there to help out the show. Plus, uh, we also do relationship consultations. So if you want a consultation for me, uh, you can email me at uh, advicefromharry at gmail.com. And if you want a consultation from Dante, how do they reach you, Dante? DanteNewer.com. Click consult. Beautiful. Enjoy the show. I'm not an alpha male. I'm not a beta male either. I'm just a better man. Better man. Well, put your happiness first, because if you don't, they won't. Yo, yo, what's up, y'all? GYBB, get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do? The sexual revolution is being podcasted, and I am excited. Um, This is a special show. Now, I might have said that uh, 600 times before, but <laughs> including uh, the last time this brother was on. But first and foremost, my partner in crime, what's going on, Harry? What's, what's popping? How you doing? I'm doing phenomenal, Dante. I'm, I'm, I'm living each day like it's my last, but then there's another day after that. <laughs> That's crazy. I'm getting That's bonus crazy. time. It's crazy. So you won yesterday. I won yesterday. And now you're winning again And today. I'm winning again today. Crazy. Like nothing but keep winning. <laughs> Why are you talking? You're both talking like Jackie Mason. Yeah, Jackie Mason. Nothing but keep winning. I win one day, then I win the next. <laughs> uh, let's get into it, man. I, I um, got my boy in the building. And he's been on the show before. Yep. Love this dude to death. Um, funniest motherfucking whatever. N- <laughs> Netflix. Uh, are they ready? Is it they ready? Yes, they ready. They ready. They ready. Tiffany yeah. Haddish, this thing on Netflix, check that out. One of the most consummate professionals and impressionists and stand-up comedians that I've ever met in my life. Thank you, sir. Saturday Thank Night Live. Thank you, sir. Thank things. you. Uh, met him when he had a huge afro. Huge, <laughs> huge afro. <laughs> right. Now, now, now it's more, it's more, it's tamer now. <laughs> it's tamer, but I remember it was huge. Yes. Uh, <laughs> huge afro and a big smile. Uh, give it up for my boy yeah. Dean Edwards. Bong bong. Bong bong. What up, fellas? What up, Harry? What up, Dante? Hey, Good man. to see y'all, man. Good on. to see back. you, buddy. Good to be back, baby. I think the last time we did this was pre-pandemic. Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah it's been that long. Yeah, man. It's been, you know it's been what's funny is uh, I'm trying to act like we haven't seen it. I just saw Dean seven minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> we were, <laughs> we were hold in up. D.C. But hold, hold up. Here's the funny part, right? So so we we would do we were doing this gig together and they they asked which way I never fly to DC. I always um like Hugh Moore, my man shout out to Hugh Moore. Hugh's always like, yo, why are you on fly? I said, because by the time the show. Yeah. yeah. And and peeps, so the reason I don't is because I figured by the time it takes me, say, an hour to get to JFK or LaGuardia, and I want to get there at least an hour early maybe a little bit earlier than that. And then it's about an hour of flight. That's three hours. And I'm like, you know what? I'd rather just drive the four hours. And that way I can just get up and go whenever I want while I'm in DC. So that's why anything that's four hours or less, I'm usually just going to drive to. But w- so as I say to you, you are <laughs> absolutely wrong. <laughs> <laughs> you are absolutely wrong. Yeah. So 
and I'll tell you what, I get the point. Uh-huh. But I literally got I got up. It was 15 minutes to the airport. Uh-huh. I had to clear check. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. the pre pre yeah, yeah. check, whatever. Right. So I literally walked in. I go in and uh tell him I'm a cripple. I get a I get a You get a wheelchair? I get a wheelchair. <laughs> Right. I get a wheelchair. But to be honest, my back is fucked up. So right, right. what happened was uh, now this, this is what and even even though that this happened to me, this was still pretty. Um, uh, so I um I got through security bong bong. Mm-hmm. So they because you, you do the retinal scan bong. Right. They walk you through. Right. Took my shoes off laptop. I boom, boom, but I got a. I got a um uh 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 you, a warning or something okay. uh, right in my nuts, right in the nut sack. I don't know. I think my dick was heavy. <laughs> <It> just... <laughs> you need a release, sir. <laughs> and so this dude, he says to me, uh, look at the screen and showed me that there was a red thing. I guess he wanted me to make <laughs> sure that he just wasn't gonna be feeling my nuts right. for no reason because I was handsome. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so, so he goes with me on the back of my hand, but I'm gonna use the back of my hand. I'm gonna do it, right? And as if, as if, as if a knuckles graze, uh, is, is less uh invasive. Well, let me tell you what he did. He literally squeegee squeegeed my crotch. <laughs> 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 Right? Then he goes in the crotch. He goes up to the, uh, uh, the curve. Then all of a sudden, he's got my balls jacking me off, right? He's jacking me off. <laughs> and I'm like, I, I don't think this is right. He goes, no, sir. It's <laughs> <laughs> and then you sound like Lexington Steel. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so from from leaving your house to getting to the hotel, how lo- how long would you say? Like use say say just using twelve noon, you left your house. What time would you say you got to the hotel on Saturday? Saturday, uh, I I uh, well, it was a little longer because they didn't have clear going. We were talking about that. They didn't have right. pre check going. Right, but see. <laughs> But uh-huh. half hour. No, it, it took. No, I'm saying from so, say you left your house at noon on Saturday, mm-hmm. just using as a round number. Okay. What time would you All say right. you checked into the hotel in D.C. if you left exactly at noon? So the flight was 48 minutes. Right. Mm-hmm. Thir- no, 36 minutes. OK. The flight was 36 minutes. Oh, that was actually faster than, uh, than I, I did the park and fly. So I drove in, took okay. me 25 minutes to get there mm-hmm. to the, the park and fly. The they took my cars, dropped mm-hmm. me over because it's literally across the street from LaGuardia. Okay. Right. Dropped me, maybe another half hour getting through security. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, Because I, I didn't get squeegeed on the way, but it was still, I didn't have the right. clear check. Right. Maybe. So you had to get about- checked on the way out of the plane. Right. Yeah, if they're doing a security <laughs> check after you leave the plane, is a little bit fucked up. Then shout I think you got to, a lawsuit. Shout out to Eric Andre. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so you, so you're at the, you're, you're all chilling at the gate by one. Yes, with that math, you're there by one. In an what hour. time's the flight leaving? Like one thirty-six minutes. So it, leaves at, so it leaves at two. So you, so the flight lands two thirty-six. Yeah. Uh, you you get to the hotel three thirty. I probably got there in two hours. Okay. With everything. With every, so you were in the hotel by two p.m. Yeah, and you left yeah. your house at twelve. That's okay. I'm not mad yeah. at that. I'm not mad at that. And I didn't. What did I do? I, I hmm. went to fucking Chick Fil A. Oh, okay. You know what I mean? I went yeah. to Chick Fil A. I had some fries. Okay. I went in, set up, boom, 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 boom. I watched a third of Nope. Yeah. On on, yeah. on the movie. Yeah, right, right. Because it's such a short, such a short. Third flight. of a movie. Yeah. And uh, 
And I was in the hotel, checked in. Okay, okay. And then Lamont picked me up. Okay. So he was there picking up. Was he up. punctual? I, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, he was like 10 minutes late, but okay. I mean, <laughs> I could have, if I had taken an Uber, okay. boom, I'd have been there probably, I'd have been, been there in an hour, an hour okay. and a half. Okay. And then, and I was chilling. I didn't have to drive. My back wasn't killing me. I wasn't drained. Yeah. So I mean, you know, four hours. Well, look, look, hold up. Let me let now Harry peep. Now this morning, mm. we were we were both pretty much checking out at the same time, right? Right. Both checking out at the same time. And I stopped. My mom's uh came to the gig, so I had to stop in Maryland. But I said now he has clear. Going back, but I got squeegee, son. But he got squeegee, but his flight still was leaving at the same time, regardless, right? Mm. I got home 30 minutes earlier than you. My you what just, time's your flight? What time did you leave? We left. Um, damn, I don't even remember, dude. I just remember we saw you. I don't remember exactly. Well, what let time. me see. No, I was here, I got here right at three because I thought at three it was oh, 250, 258. Okay. Cause I was, I I thought we were supposed to do this podcast at three, mm -hmm. so I was, and then I was like, oh, it's not till four. So okay, so, okay, so, so you got three. you got there three. I got home three eighteen, and that was with a stop in in Maryland. So that's what I'm saying. That's why. But for did me, you you drove though? And we drove. So that's mm -hmm. what I'm saying. Even though you flew in and it was quicker, you still the the cumulative time. Yeah, of you going it so that's why for me I just prefer I don't if 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 I can drive I rather yeah. drive in, unless if it's a short distance and I yeah. fly it's because I want my air miles right I'm being well late. that's the other thing I'm just yeah. I'm gathering air miles yeah. and so yeah. man me, I, I wish I had a story to add to this riveting conversation about <laughs> airline travel guys. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I had well, some anyway. some road stories to add to this, guys. But you don't want uh, you don't want me to coming. finish the squeeze. So he's squeezing my balls. Let me pick it up. I think that was the peak. Of the, I think that was the peak. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. My back starts hurting. This nice little young lady. She goes, "Do you need a chair?" That's how I was sweating because I was back. Oh, oh man. She went and got me a chair. I said, "I." So I naturally I got a. Uh, <laughs> comments and i wrote her up and gave her she was then i slipped over the 20 walked Boom. me to the nice. gate bong Boom. bong i was on that's a man that knows how to do you always got that tip the people that look out gotta make yeah. sure you, and i did a write-up for her so Boom. and, and the I, right the write-ups and i too. tipped the 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 the, the, the wheelchair dude oh <laughs> no, no, <laughs> i, I like, tip him <laughs> I was like, yeah, he got his tip. He got his. I think uh, he reward. was he was thorough enough that he yeah. got all he wanted. Yeah, <laughs> he doesn't even work at the airport. He's a volunteer. He I was wondering why I never seen yeah. a purple vest before. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, <laughs> so, so um, yeah, but he 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 fucking squeezing me like crazy, Jesus, like buddy. he back and front crotch. He was like he was like, you want to go someplace? <laughs> I was like, nah, let's just do it well, right here, son. Well, let's get it. He's trying to find out. He's trying to take you for a drink. Yeah. I'm like, nah, son, I'm good. I'm going to go someplace a little more intimate. <laughs> he put a flask, he gave me his flask. I was like, I'm good, dog. You're, you're wild. So um, I got a chance to talk to your wife. This is the first okay. time I really got a chance to talk to your wife. Oh, I didn't know that. I never knew that. Yeah, I mean, we've hired and blah, blah, yeah, blah, yeah, blah. Yeah. But the first time we really, really good vibe. And, yeah, yeah, and, yeah. um, Dean's uh married, been married for how many years now, Dean? Nine together, twenty-seven, married nineteen. Wow. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna ask you this. What do you think some of the things that you you've learned through time that you feel as though that you didn't know when you were younger that you know now? Uh, or that things or how you would handle things differently or um, you know what I and I I think I think I actually joke about it and did did the joke on stage last night. I said, uh, you know, the thing you learn is it is not that serious, right? right? Yeah, it's not yeah. that serious, and uh, you know, it's wasted and it, like arguing is kind of wasted energy, um, because you know when when it's all said and done, y'all y'all still love each other. We're gonna be together. We're gonna be together. So. You know why even waste that? And 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 oftentimes it's it's it would be about something minute, 
right. that either, you know you eventually kind of phase off. And when you how often about, do you think it's it, you know, because you hear this a lot where that people are, you know, married couples are arguing, mm-hmm. but it's the argument is about something else, and it, think, and it becomes about. Yeah, I think e- ego ego winds up uh, yeah. getting involved. I, I read yeah. this book, uh, "Ego Is the Enemy" by uh, oh, I think his name is Ryan Holiday, mm-hmm. and and you know after after reading that book. You start to you're like, oh wow, everything. You know, you insert your ego into everything. Yeah, yeah. And and, and make decisions based on your ego. And and sometimes, you know, you're you're putting um what you want to do ahead of everybody else. And you're like, you know what? Mm-hmm. If, if 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 you know, even something as simple as like here you go in the uh bathroom to brush your teeth first and I'll go in afterwards, right? And you know that I'm sure there are couples that would argue over something like that, and then you're like, "All right, we'll just go." Okay, mm-hmm. I still brush my teeth if I do brush them at all. <laughs> yeah, right, right. So right. why, I, why I, even I waste think, that energy? Yeah, I think you gotta, you have to d- kind of understand what what's important and what's not important. And yeah. so, ego, ego. I always used to say, ego is uh, is saying. Don't you know who the fuck I am? Oh, like that's that's, 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 exactly, what, that's exactly what that's And really. I always remember when I was bouncing and um the four sem one of the dudes it was the four sem D's uh-huh. the four sem D's of course uh 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 what's his name Bow legged Lou no no I'm thinking no that's no you talking that's, about I'm uh full force both with full force no so, uh, four sem D's was, was the Staten sweaters Island. yeah remember Staten Staten the, yeah yeah so the one that got strung out on drugs and then he got mm-hmm. clean. Uh-huh. Right, and I'm bouncing out of the spot, and he comes. Up, you don't know who I am, and I was like, "No, no." Yeah. <laughs> right, and and so it's this kind of a thing where you know, if I knew who you were, I probably I wouldn't be. You know what I'm saying? Nobody's directly trying to besmirch your character. Right, just, right, right. Is I just don't. You know, I'm I'm trying to make this. My, I'm yeah. trying to make this hundred fifty dollars, and right. I'm trying to make sure nobody gets killed. And this is just really not about you. Right. But I think what happens is that even with that, mm-hmm. it's a, it's a thing where people want to be. But I I take it one step further, and I say you can't let emotion have a seat at the table at any time when it comes to any anything. Anytime you you're allowing emotion in the, in this into mm-hmm. the context of what you're doing because. Yeah. You don't see it clearly because it's exactly. you're tainted by you know. That's why I'm not. Um, a, I'm not a fan of. The, we we were just joking on the on the drive back home, listening to somebody on the radio, and they said within the span of a couple of minutes, they said, "I just feel like," and I, you know, I I can't stand that phrasing because yeah. nobody cares about your emotions and how you right, feel. Right. You know, if if it's a belief, then you're standing in your beliefs. But if you just well, it's, I just and you hear a lot of people. Using yeah. that vernacular. This lately. is something you don't even really care about. You right. Got, you got a notion. Right. Uh, and why am I well, respecting this? It's not necessarily, at least it's not grounded in any, any it's facts. It's not grounded. It's yeah, not yeah. grounded. It's pure, yeah. that's pure emotion versus mm-hmm. actually speaking something factual, something that, that you can, you have evidence that can, that can, uh you know, stand behind it. Someone, so, the dude from the Force MDs, um, Saying, "Hey, man, don't you know who I am?" In his mind, he's like, I, "He, he could very well say the same." You know, I just feel like you're trying to disrespect me because I've had this success, and also like, and who are you? You the bouncer? Yeah, right. And that, and because that's what, and that again, that goes back to ego. I could I, say, "Uh, well, I don't give a fuck." Like, like, why are you treating me just because you had success? Exactly. Why does that give you the right to be disrespectful? Exactly. And that's that's the problem with with ego when you in my opinion, when you when you step back and look at it, it's purely your individual opinion versus the general consensus. Because there would have been, I'm sure there were other people in that line. Say, say five people did say, Oh yeah, he did that song with Ghostface, right? Right. Um, or or they, they had uh tender love on the uh, oh, yeah. Crush Groove soundtrack, right? But there were there were probably even more people that did without without his his four brothers or cousins and yeah, them yeah, all, with all dancing, of them they wouldn't even remember them all together. They really, wasn't they in them the white, white sweaters in the white the video. in the white uh you know uh sweater vests, right? He was the O 
Because <laughs> they had so how they was had a letter. MDs, it was white sweaters, and each one had a different letter spelling out force MDs. F-O-R-C. <laughs> Hold on, what is this? Force MDs? The force yeah, they were the know, force MCs first. They look up the group. Be so okay, now this is uh so beyond, and I go pretty deep old school. This is beyond my baby. Oh, they I are wearing the sweaters. Oh, my God. The sweater picture came up. I see. Well, the one I have is just all they all have F on it. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. They all yeah. have the F, they'd wear the <laughs> and jacket. The was dope. Yeah, so their result. gimmick apparently was wearing the thing because at one point when they're younger, they had just have the sweaters, and then like later on. Uh, they have leather jackets and it's a shiny F. So it's oh, like, well, they're like, well, hey, that, we're all grown uh, now. Yeah, that, and that's 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 the beginning of the end. You that's, go sad. You know. <laughs> that's sad. That's sad. You got to see Also, as soon as you do a shiny you F. Yeah. It's all over. That's, shiny uh, F. and uh, yeah, oh my God. They had, oh, they look like a barbershop quartet. Yeah. yeah well, that was their thing. That was it. It was like, it was, it was when hip hop was still in his infancy. They were like a hip hop doo uh, uh right. which would have been yeah. fine for the time but did not age well right right yeah did, did he eventually uh, dante did he eventually did you let him in did he have, did um, he ever get in no because he he, he <laughs> wilded out and i was like I, and then it got to be um are you out your mom like who the fuck right, are you talking right, to now right. i'm giving you the business on purpose right you know? did you let so, me ask you this as as a bouncer did you at times had you recognized him and if had he not come to you you know absolutely um, arrogantly what is that or i guess my question is is there a general courtesy to people have some level of celebrity where they come to the front of the line and, yeah. and even yeah. if you're even if you're not necessarily super familiar and if you see him you're like oh hey my man you i know would I mean? do that i yeah. would absolutely do that yeah I mean, because at the at the you know on the on the level of um, the owner of the club, they want famous people in the club. Right. It's okay. Much better for the club. You right. Know? Okay. Okay. Interesting. But it don't make me no different. I mean, you you understand it, but it's just somebody who gives you that kind of smoke on the front end. Yeah. Chances are he's going to be a problem on the back end. Right. Because he so, gets inside, he's like, and it's gonna and keep. Turn up. You don't know who I am, and somebody yeah. he's like, "This is my VIP section." Which yeah, I never, I never be a problem. The VIP section. I'm gonna end up throwing him over the garbage. Right. <laughs> just throw a dude over the garbage bags, and then, and then you gotta a... tell. Then the problem is you can't even explain that it was somebody famous. You gotta explain like <laughs> you know those guys that used to wear the 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 name on the F? sweater. The worst I, I thing think is, so. I think so. Yeah, I threw one of them over a trash can. You can't even buy those sweaters. Once you get a stain, you can't buy those sweaters no more. It's not you, right. Nice, that you have to you have to have like you know, mom's probably somebody's mom's was the scene. Somebody kid. knitted those. <laughs> they had to go buy five Fs. <laughs> the five matching sweaters in all the different sizes. Yeah, here's a here's a funny thing too. So, you know, everything has been crystallized on the show. You know how to you know when I get guys who have a problem with women or have a problem and don't have the confidence. One of the things that we talk about is laying the five bricks, mm -hmm. right? And uh, it means go out and tell, give five women a compliment every day, literally mm -hmm. like we would handle an open mic. It's like right. uh, uh, not not sexual, mm -hmm. has to be true, mm -hmm. right? And it doesn't have to be just a type of a woman that you want to sleep with. Right. It can be an old lady, it can be a young lady, could be whatever. Co-worker. Right? Now, conversely, office. as many guys that listen to the show, mm -hmm. as many guys as have ever uh asked for my help for my help, many guys have said, Oh, you changed my life. This this whole thing has changed my life. I don't know, maybe two guys that actually did what I told them to do. Really? They they do a portion of it, uh -huh. but they do some freestyle version of uh, of what I tell them to do. They want the shortcut, including Harry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, really, sure. Harry? Did you for a while? Now, um, now why why didn't you adhere to just just because it's uncomfortable? It? It's hard. <laughs> it's uncomfortable. So you try to do 
you try to do your best because you're afraid of uh, failing. Eventually, mm-hmm. I did the right thing. I learned. No, but here's the thing, that. though. Have uh, um, it's not uncomfortable. Like if you had to do five bricks today, how long would it take you to hit the streets and do five bricks? How long you think it, it wouldn't take you? me very long now? Not at all. Like, what do you think? I can Give bang me it out. I mean, I just go out on this the busy street right. I have here and bang it out in twenty minutes. Yeah, fifteen I'll twenty minutes. Done in fifteen twenty right. minutes. Yeah. So it sound like name happened, that tune. I can do that in in five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> but but what's what 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 guys don't understand is because you're talking about the emotion of it, the ego. Yeah, yeah. But it's not you know ego is an emotion, but so is yeah. so is fear. So oh, yeah. is all of these things are emotions, yeah. and and so often we are we are ruled by these emotions, and yeah. so. Uh, the apprehension, the anxiety of what is the worst case, what's going to happen if I, right. and now we're not talking about, and, and I mean, here's the great, greatest thing about this. I don't even have to really explain it to Dean because Dean is not an offensive guy. Mm-hmm. Even when I'm most offensive, yeah, there goes Dean will give me the look, smile. He'll look, put, he'll flash the pearly that's the, whites. That's the yin and the yang, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm the gang gang. <laughs> gang 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 gang. So but it's um what happens is the fact that you don't um when you do it, when you actually go through it, there's three elements that it takes care of. Number one, it removes uh anxiety and fear, which is removes the emotion. Um, number two, it uh, also it removes all emotion because it becomes so you become so embedded in it mm. that what happens is um, all of the emotion removes. It's it becomes it's kind of like a so Harry's been working his butt off in the gym for mm-hmm. what two years now, Harry? Yeah, man. Yeah, about, about two, two years. years. So, but sometimes you get a better workout than others. But the sure. point is, you, right. you show up, right, right. You and show when up. you, yeah. when you really start, even when you don't have a great whatever, but you just show up, mm-hmm. right. What happens is like, okay, what, what am I doing today? I'm doing this. This is the plan. Da, 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 right. So it removes the fear and the anxiety of rejection. It also removes it because there's no no intention but to get through the workout because you start to understand you understand that this none of these workouts matter but all of them matter do you know exactly uh, which is is a sobering state of affairs to understand that none of those things none of this work in, in retrospect this if i just do this workout it means nothing mm-hmm. it only make means something in 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 in, in in, in the collusion with relation, yeah, everything, yeah. So there's that that need to be to for it to go perfect stops. You stop right. worrying about that, so you don't have that anxiety. The second thing is when you do it frequently enough, you start to realize. Um, so, have let me ask you this: yeah. when you, I don't know if you can even go back this far. What it? What was the worst case scenario that you thought would happen? Uh, when, with with talking to women or just no, just, just doing laying five laying the five bricks. What, well, again, you got to remember we didn't have the five bricks when I started. It wasn't that's true. A, that's officially true. a thing. So I, it's what not was as the, if, what was it? You remember what? I don't remember the details of what it was, but it, I was hard headed about it. I was just hard headed about. It. I don't remember the exact details of what the specific instructions were because you still were figuring it out. Um, yeah, it's but so it was, it was precise making, and crystallized now. Yeah, which makes it was it just easier. being willing to take the loss and also, um, uh, yeah, just willing to take the loss and willing to say no, you know, or willing to just uh, shoot your shot. And I just didn't want the reject. It was hard. I felt like at a low point, I, I hated the I, I hated rejection, which mm-hmm. is so strange because now it doesn't mean anything to me, the rejection, right. because it's the focus is in a different place. So now the focus is when I get rejected by somebody to me, they're the idiot. I know what I bring to the table, whether it's relationships or, or, uh, or business or whatever, or when I don't get a job, if I'm, if I'm doing job interviews or trying to get a project going, when people say no, now I'm like, I, in my heart and my head, I know they're the idiot. So it doesn't affect me. But at the time I didn't have, I felt maybe enough wins under my belt. The things weren't going well. 
financially, emotionally. There's a lot of things going wrong that just taking another loss in my head w- was stinging. And I just didn't want to I didn't want to take another loss. It well, felt embarrassing. It felt shitty. You're like, ah, oh, geez, I'm a shitty person. And I'm you know not what? Good enough. You know what I think, Harry? I think yeah. I think most guys, as you become more mature in, which is why it becomes easier as you get older, right? You you learn to realize that rejection is a part of life, and it's not as daunting as we think it is when we're younger. You know, you know, back in the days, walking across, like you know, you walk in a club, you do yeah, like yeah. a lap or two, you, yeah. you, you know, like all right, I saw, so, so, so. one out, right, and going just just to walk across the club to ask some stranger, and that's I don't I don't think you know, uh, women realize how how daunting that could be for for a man. Yeah. To to say, okay, I have to go invade this stranger's space mm-hmm. and see if they want to dance, see if they see if they'll let their guard down enough just to interact with me. And you and you like, also don't think you're worthy. And and part of you doesn't I ain't gonna front. I always thought I was worthy. I've always had a high But I mean you don't <laughs> know if you don't know if you think if they think that we're worthy. Yeah. Which Indeed. is which is still a, an insecurity because if you really Plus. know you're worthy, you walk mm-hmm. up there with the intention, "I'm worthy." Like, right. why would you not? Right? Like, I mean, it's ridiculous. Right. What do you mean? No. Well, and and that's what eventually happened. I remember I stopped. Like I got sick. I was like, I remember saying to myself, "This is years ago." I remember saying, "Yo, I'm." I, I remember saying, "Yo, I'm dope." Why am I going out of my way? And I started just going to club. And I would go and dance solo, mm-hmm. and eventually, if because you see, I was just enjoying myself. And then yeah, if people someone wanted them. people yeah. want to be around somebody that has that freedom to say, I don't need nobody to have fun. That's why mm-hmm. I always dig when I when I see people go to clubs, the comedy club specifically, um, and and more, it's it's less creepy when it's a woman alone. When it's a dude alone, yeah. <laughs> you know, you're like he looks like a weirdo. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Dude, is, but, he but, really likes rap music. <laughs> he seems to know all the lyrics too. <laughs> but that's I, I think over time, the more you the more you face rejection, the more you realize I survived right. that. This doesn't right, matter. Right. This is not a big deal to me. And well, so even for me, my thing was like, oh my, like what happens huh? after I get rejected? Like it, right. for me, it right. was like. Oh my God! What what do I do now? And right. what you realize is, I so 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 I wanted to you know when you talk you're talking about emotion and mm-hmm. ego, mm-hmm. it's you remove through the repetition you remove the you remove the emotion exactly. So, so yeah. now there's a few elements that come into play because everything is everything else meaning. Mm-hmm. We good as a comic, you get on stage and you start doing open mics. Mm -hmm. And open mics are usually horrible because nobody, everybody's worried about their own shit and everybody's Mm -hmm. whatever the fuck they think on whatever level, whatever. But the point is you go up and you do open mics and and even if you are funny, a lot of times people are jealous, so they won't they won't even laugh at you. You know, they'll 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 act like uh they'll act like it's not you know like like you're not funny they're not even paying attention sometimes right and so open mics are always good because it, it, it when you and then when you get in there you do a real show mm-hmm. you're like oh wow mm-hmm. oh this is what laughter feels like you know right. this is what acceptance <laughs> feels like so so this you know because i one of the guys on in the in the on the patreon was asking this question we'll get into mm-hmm. the other thing it, it, there's three things that happen when you lay the five bricks. Mm-hmm. Number one, it becomes exposure therapy where you become numb to it, where be, it stops becoming about what the outcome is, because which is interesting, because I always say uh, the outcome doesn't matter. Like like so I break it down into small parts. It's like I take you through phases to strengthen, you You know, like like I, I never was a dude who played Madden. Right. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I don't know. Do you play Madden or no? I don't. I don't. No. I, I'm a, I'm a God of War, uh, uh, you know, uh, Jedi, uh, you know, right, right. 
a game. But just like anybody, especially uh, let's say Madden or or again, if you haven't played Madden for five years, mm-hmm. if unless you got to a level of proficiency that you you can't play the game anymore, you know right, what I mean? Like right. there's so many layers to it, mm-hmm. there's so many subtleties yeah. Yeah. to it that you get left behind, and yeah. and 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 what happens is you can't even you can't even catch up. So I know guys who played Madden and then they stop playing Madden. They don't play video games when they mm-hmm. hang, you know, they hooking up with these young kids and playing with these young dudes and <laughs> hey, they can't hang. Yeah. And there's <laughs> so much more to, to yeah. there because there's so much levels of, you know, it just keeps getting more and more complicated. So yeah. what I always do is I take it and I break it down into, into, into small increments, small mm-hmm digestible increments so all i was asking dudes to do is go out pay five compliments a day Mm. it can be somebody that you find attractive it Mm. doesn't have to it should include that but it should not be exclusively that yeah um and uh what that does is through the repetition now the fear of the approach once you get accustomed to the because first of all there's no rejection i mean i i i and this is i've done this to hundreds of guys mm-hmm. the one thing that they say is wow it really wasn't really bad at all i mean well, a lot of girls smiled and some you know mm-hmm. and then they'll go one one girl didn't say anything to me i said but based on your worst case scenario of what you thought was going to happen did mm-hmm. any of that happen? And and they yeah. always go, no, n- not at all. Like, right. like they're in their head. There's this fear of what the who the fuck are you talking to me? Or they, you know, the whole right. thing is with yeah. the Me Too pro thing. Right. How do you talk to women? I get this question. How do you handle this? Me, right. I go. You're just saying I like your hair. Right. I I I, I that's that dress looks really good with the skin with your skin tone mm-hmm. and so on that first level you just oh, and I'm not in, I'm not saying you got to get the number I'm mm-hmm. not saying you got to get laid I'm just saying drop the compliment so the first thing that happens it gets over the fear right mm-hmm. second thing it does is it, it has to be the compliment has to be truthful mm-hmm. right because what we're practicing is truthfulness right. One of the things that's most attractive, the, the most attractive thing to women ever is your truthfulness. Yeah. Even when they don't like the truthfulness. I mean, you know, we talk about every once in a while, Kevin Samuels, rest his soul. Um, Our Lord and Savior, Kevin Samuels. <laughs> no name above that name. <laughs> he, he, you, they, you know, here's a dude who, who they knew how he was going to respond. If you 40 right. years old, and you 190 pounds, mm. you know what his response is going to be. But yeah. they would call up anyway. Anyway, yeah. I know. To get yeah. yelled at. Right. <laughs> ma'am, ma'am, uh, uh, what do you look like? How, how much do you weigh? How old yeah. are you? Yeah. <laughs> and just and, and you rate yourself. Yeah. Other. He wouldn't even rate them. Right. Just once in a while. A chick- right. I will say the most brilliant thing he ever did was say that you can't say seven. Yeah. Yeah, because that's uh-huh. the... That's the sweet that's spot. Everything yeah, yeah. it fucked if up you the go whole six, game. Yeah, if you go six, it's like, oh, you ugly. <laughs> and if you go, eight, if you go eight, you like, you fine. Like, well, and and, and 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 if you go eight, but you know you really are five, he gonna hit you with the. Nah, yeah, man. Yeah. Well, then he used to go. Uh, uh, Kelly Rowland is a nine. Because mm-hmm. I would say Beyonce is an eight. That's what he would say. Beyonce's mm. an eight. Kelly Rowland's a nine. I like. I'm, I'm not mad at that. And he goes, and you're you're you you you're an eight. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Yeah. So it's like <laughs> you you. There was you a look... level of egotism of calling up to a guy who you just watched 57 videos of him yelling at women <laughs> for right. being fat and ugly. Right. And knowing that he's going to ask you, it's not like these are right. questions that came up randomly. And a woman would still call up and he'd go, how tall are you? Like uh, four foot eight. How big are you? Uh, 217 pounds. Yeah. And you yeah. still called up. It's craziness. <laughs> well, you know, you know, but, but again, that goes to ego because that's, yeah. uh, you know, especially I'm going to get him this time. Now, it's going to well, be now because we all him. have this right now that we yeah. all have this. Everybody believe everyone feels Mm-hmm. That there you go. There's that word again, Dean. Yeah. Everyone feels their opinion should be heard, but the reality is 
if you call once you called up and you submitted to to being part of this show it's so it's sort of like when you go to a when you go to a tv show taping before mm -hmm. you before you walk into your audience there's a big sign that says if you walk into this studio, you agree that um, your your name, face, likeness is uh, is is now um, for this the sole purposes of this television program. You're mm -hmm. allowing us to utilize right. um, your your image for whatever reason. So, mm -hmm. someone someone volunteering to call up this video that sh and they've watched him yeah. do what he does countless times. Someone saying, you know what, I'm gonna be the one. I'm you know what he needs to hear, and he needs to hear what I got to say. And he's heard it all. He's yeah. heard it all. But you're like, no, you know what? He, I feel like what I say. And then, and here's what here's also what happens. You all know, like I know, like when people get on Wheel of Fortune and they say it's so much easier on TV, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 Once you go live, once the red light is on, you yeah. go live. You know the physiology of your body's. Uh, it's it, you know you yeah. Now your throat's a little drier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, now, yeah. Now, you can't, now you're like he's hitting you with a question you didn't expect. So you're like, wait, but I wanted to say this. Ah, uh, um, you know, and now and he's expect. done it so much, which he has the exposure therapy. Yeah. So exactly. it, it, you're just another caller. Just well, another I don't caller. get my way. Well, you yeah. you get your big ass off of my. <laughs> right. Right. Oh, uh, but it it it, it creates it, it removes the the emotion. Mm -hmm. So whatever charmingness or whatever appeal or whatever uh whatever makes you interesting in the first place, mm -hmm. once you remove that fear, because the minute fear becomes a, a factor, emotion mm -hmm. becomes a factor, mm -hmm. especially fear. You can cut your your charismatic ability down mm -hmm. to a third. Yeah. Yeah, it's like being on stage. You know, how I was to, just like, thinking that I was like, yeah. you can apply that to anything. Yeah, yeah. Every time you you get on, if you're going for an audition mm -hmm. and it's important, and you're afraid, what you're doing is you're practicing that set. Or if you're doing a late night set or something, you're practicing it so much so it's almost autopilot. Yeah. So that even if you fuck up, it doesn't matter. Your body goes nah. on auto mode, right. autopilot. Right. And right. that's and that's what it does. Um. Yeah. Dean, let's let's uh you want to plug anything we're gonna do the Patreon behind the scenes and you know what y'all can um this I don't know is how soon is this uh dropping? Harry? Uh either this week or next week. So what do you it, gotta plug? Oh wait, okay. when is the play coming up? The play is this week. So if if it drops yeah, I'm gonna drop it tomorrow. I'll drop okay, it tomorrow. Okay, boom. Okay, so this Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, uh I'm uh I'm one of the co-stars and one of the producers of um Race the Movie the Play. The reading we uh it's a play that I did with uh with my man uh uh Brett Rayball and Christian Brett, fan of the show he's actually done the show okay the okay yeah. yeah and so so we we did this we actually did Harry actually came and saw the show yeah, yeah I want to come this it was I phenomenal wanna, yeah. I really we're, enjoyed we're, it we are at we're part of the New York Comedy Festival um <laughs> get your tickets because we God sold bless. out all our shows last time. Uh, we're at we're at uh, Stand Up New York this Thursday and Friday. I believe that's the 10th and 11th at 7 p.m. Uh, and then we're doing a matinee reading of the show um, on Saturday afternoon. I believe at one or two. Are you doing the p. full show Thursday? We're, do like, we're doing we're doing the we're doing the read at Stand Up New York because obviously they don't have a big thing yeah. for us to put our wardrobe on. But we're doing a read. We did we did the read. Um, at, at the Village Underground a couple of months ago. And surprisingly, uh, well, not surprisingly, the show is so so dope that everything landed and it's a spoof. The play is a spoof of all of those Hollywood race bait Oscar um, award Whoa. nominees, Super movies, Whoa. everything from Green Book to Driving Miss Daisy mm -hmm. to... Uh, um, la la, you know, we we goof on all of those those tropes of the white savior, um, mm -hmm. and so but we use Green Book as as our main foundation. We even throw yeah. in some some references to uh 
to the the MCU, the Marvel Comics universe, man. Right. It's a, it's a funny it's a funny show. It's so really you're not good. doing uh, you're not doing anything full full blown. You're not you're not doing we're, wardrobe. We're not doing the full wardrobe. Okay, but so you, just to read. All right, I'm gonna come. I'll come. Yeah, come through because 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 I guarantee you, it's it's y'all gonna enjoy it. And it's and okay. it's honestly because um you know my wife's a professor of of, of lit, and mm. she even I I was more excited after she was like. It's so it's so funny, but it's so smart. Like it's yeah. really, I'm, I'm yeah, very impressed really with what they what they uh what they exceptional. Create. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it was exceptional. And it will be a movie. I, I guarantee. Look, I'm putting it out there now, manifested in Denzel's voice. I guarantee you're gonna <laughs> laugh, and it will be a uh, a successful movie one day. <laughs> I, I, I told I Ray that. I said, turned around and said that. this <laughs> may be <laughs> this is at something like. This the uh I told Ray that too. I said this is you, the the concept itself. Yeah, man. Is, it's going to get made. It's yeah, going to get made. Yeah, and I think we have a special guest um is playing one of the roles on a uh, uh, Thursday or Friday that that everyone okay. will will be excited to see as part of the All show. Right. So yeah. All right. Um, have and and check and check out um they ready on uh they ready season two episode on Netflix on Netflix right now. Yeah, yeah. Check out Dean, my man, funny, funny dude. Yo, Harry talk. Uh, you can get all my stuff on social media at Harry Turjanian. And uh, also, if you want uh, a consultation, hit me up via email, adviceframharry at gmail.com. And uh, we can set up a time and go over rates and uh, help fix your life, fix your relationships. Anything you need help with, I'm here for you. Um, yo, uh, you know, DanteNero.com. Click on consult. Everything else, Google me, bitch. Um, <laughs> uh... GYBB, get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do to sexual revolutions being podcasted? Yo, I love y'all. Check us out on the Patreon side if you want to help love. us. Also support love. us on Patreon, www.patreon.com backslash Manschool202. Support us so we can keep doing this.